I had a dream on November 27th, 2021, that I was walking in the desert with a man whom I have never seen before. He appeared to be in his 40s, clean shaven, and was dressed in ancient garb, an olive green cloak. He was speaking to me about the will of God. To summarize what he was saying, most people are too busy with their lives to know the will of God, and even if they do know, they ignore it because it is too inconvenient for them. I thought of what Jesus said, For the coming of the Son of Man, the Messiah, will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the very day when Noah entered the ark, and they did not know or understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be unexpected judgment. Matthew 24, 37 through 39. In other words, people are going about their lives with not a care in the world, despite God constantly warning us over and over again. Despite a tyrannical one world government, a world war which chimera monsters destroy a third of humanity, America nuked from sea to shining sea, people are still living it up. Their heads are still in the sand. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent even then of the works of their hands, so as to cease worshipping and paying homage to the demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of bronze and of stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of the murders nor of the, their sorceries, drugs, intoxications, nor of their sexual immorality, nor of their thefts. Revelation 9, 20 and 21. Business as usual, dancing down a railroad track, not hearing the train coming until it's too late. This isn't something to put off until later. You may not have tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. If you haven't made the choice to follow Jesus yet, today, not tomorrow, is the day of salvation. Many people think of the will of God as some kind of big, mysterious, mystical thing to be discovered. Big? Yes. Mysterious? Not so much. It is not a secret hidden in heaven that you should say, He will go up to heaven for us and bring it to us, so that we may hear it and obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, He will cross the sea for us and bring it to us, so that we may hear it and obey it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, so that you may obey it. Deuteronomy 30, 12-14 For Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness which is based on law, with all his intricate demands, shall live by it. But the righteousness based on faith, which produces a right relationship with him, says the following, Do not say in your heart, He will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or he will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead, as if we had to be saved by our own efforts doing the impossible. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis of faith which we preach. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 5-9 We tend to overcomplicate the will of God. We wonder, where shall I live? What job should I do? What shall I wear? And what shall I eat? What did Jesus say about these things? Do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, What are we going to eat? Or, What are we going to drink? Or, What are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first, and most importantly, seek 
aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. Matthew 6, 31-33 God is more concerned about who you are, your character, than what you do or where you live. This is the will of God, that you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Everything else are side issues. Get your priorities straight, and don't worry about the rest. And when you are consistent in prayer and have a solid understanding of Scripture, then these side issues, where you should live, what you should do for work, what you should wear, and what shall you eat, will become more black and white. You will have more discernment on what is good and what is evil, what is God's best, and what is not. Now let's hear what the Apostle said about the Lord's will. Come now and pay attention to this. You who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and carry on our business and make a profit. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen in your life tomorrow. What is secure in your life? You are merely a vapor like a puff of smoke or a wisp of steam from the, a cooking pot that is visible for a little while and then vanishes into thin air. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and we will do this or that. But as it is, you boast vainly in your pretension and arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So any person who knows what is right to do, but does not do it, to him it is sin. James 4:13 through 17 Finally, believers, we ask and admonish you in the Lord Jesus that you follow the instruction that you received from us about how you ought to walk and please God, just as you are actually doing, and that you excel even more and more, pursuing a life of purpose and living in a way that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. For you know what commandments and precepts we gave you, by the authority of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, that you be sanctified, separated, and set apart from sin, that you abstain and back away from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his body in holiness and honor, being available for God's purpose, and separated from things profane, not to be used in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God and are ignorant of his will. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1-5 Now, we ask you, brothers and sisters, to appreciate those who diligently work among you, recognize, acknowledge, and respect your leaders who are in charge over you and the Lord who give you instruction. And we ask that you appreciate them and hold them in the highest esteem and love because of their work on your behalf. Live in peace with one another. We earnestly urge you, believers, admonish those who are out of line, the undiscipled, the unruly, the, the disorderly. Encourage the timid, who lack spiritual courage, help the spiritually weak. Be very patient with everyone, always controlling your temper. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always, and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you and Christ Jesus. Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies, spoken revelations, words of instruction, or exhortation or warning. But test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good. 
Hold firmly to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Withdraw and keep away from it. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful and absolutely trustworthy is he who is calling you to himself for your salvation. He will do it. He will fulfill his call by making you holy, guarding you, watching over you, and protecting you as his own. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12-24 Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from the sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Conduct yourself honorably with graciousness and integrity, so that for whatever reason they may slander you as evildoers. Yet by observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glorify God in the day of visitation, when he looks upon them with mercy. Submit yourselves to the authority of every human institution for the sake of the Lord, to honor his name, whether it is to a king, as one in a position of power, or to governors as sent by him to bring punishment to those who do wrong, and to praise and encourage those who do right. For it is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence, muzzle, gag the culpable ignorance and irresponsible criticisms of foolish people. Live as free people. But do not use your freedom as a cover or pretext for evil, but use it and live as bondservants of God. Show respect for all people, treat them honorably, love the brotherhood of believers, fear God, honor the king. 1 Peter 2.13-17 Peter also wrote, Now who is there to hurt you if you become enthusiastic for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, though it is not certain that you will, you are still blessed, happy to be admired and favored by God. Do not be afraid of their intimidating threats, nor be troubled or disturbed by their opposition. But in your heart set Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confident assurance elicited by faith that is within you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear, that every time you are slandered or falsely accused, those who attack or disparage your good behavior in Christ will be shamed by their own words. For it is better that you suffer unjustly for doing what is right, if that should be God's will, than to suffer justly for doing wrong. 1 Peter 3, 13-17 Hope this helps clarify what the Lord's will is for you. Don't be like most people who value convenience and comfort over truth and righteousness. God bless you all.